Great to see you. And uh, thanks for doing this. You too. No, I'm always happy to speak to you. Oh, thank you. So would you like to introduce yourself and how you identify yourself in this world? Um, so I am Danny Arlington. Um, I'm an actor and I'm currently understudying um, Jodie Comer in Prima Fersi. Um My pronouns are she, her. And yeah. Yeah. And you, you, you forgot on Broadway. On Broadway. That's on Broadway. a very important part. And the West End, right? Like, yeah. I have to say, so you, I don't know if you'll say it, but I'll ask you. Like, I can't think of a more complex understudy role than this one right now, happening right now, as a one woman play. And with the with the topic that is, you know, the that is at hand, I just how do you feel about this every day? Because we're you're still in it. Like you still have a few days remaining. So you could get a phone call right now to, that you need to to jump in tonight. How does that feel? Um I think, I mean, I I agree. This is definitely, I think, not only the most challenging. I, this is my first understudy role, so <laughs> out of all the, I think I, I took the hardest one. Um, but to be honest, I think that that's why I had to take it because it felt just so challenging and something that, I mean, as soon as I read the script, I just thought I, I have to try this. I have to see if this is something I can do. And I was just so drawn to the story. Um, but yeah, I think at the beginning, I definitely was living with like mild anxiety 90% of the time. Yeah, it um, didn't show, it didn't show, at least in Broadway, when I when I met you in April, I think is was the first time. When did that start to change for you? I think, um, I don't know really. I think that, you know, I think if you, I just have to kind of, keep myself prepared and as long as I feel confident that you know because I'm not getting up there and doing it every day that you know sometimes I'll walk to work and like do a little line run on the way so I just look like a crazy person talking to myself down the yeah. street but um and I think yeah I think you've got to really look after yourself and just make sure that you feel prepared and then that really helps with the anxiety because you know you feel ready so yeah and I Speaking of ready, and I, as I say, you know, and many people say, stay ready, you don't have to get ready. You yeah. also, on top of all of this, had a really unique situation happen just a couple of weeks ago. Just yeah. With being in, in New York, and many people would have uh, heard about the, or experienced the, I think it was like on record the worst air quality in New York's history or something like that, something to that effect. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, so so for anyone who doesn't know, um, I, I was actually, I had just left, I'd been at the play for several weeks. I was mm -hmm. on a flight to LA to go home for a few days and I, I got started getting pinged. Um, and I saw what's happened, what's going on? They said, Jody, Jody's not on, you know? Um, and so can you tell me from your perspective what happened and... So I'll, I'll finish it by saying Jody just couldn't breathe up there uh, with this air quality. And, mm -hmm. and I would have to imagine you had moments to, to prepare, prepare to be the understudy to be out there. So can you say from your perspective, are you, did you have any idea that that might happen just earlier in the day or was it like? No, I feel like I was quite naive going into that situation. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because I, I, yeah, I assumed like everybody else, I was like, you know, we're indoors, we're going to be fine. But I think, I think what had happened was once they were letting the audience in, obviously all of the doors are open. I think a lot of that smoke filled the theater mm -hmm. um, and you could see it under the lights. Like it was definitely, it was definitely smoky in there. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, I, I, I it, it, it was just such a very strange <laughs> day. Um, I probably had about 15 minutes to get ready, but most of that was putting a mic on and, you know, 
and just trying to warm up vocally but um yeah I think that I was really lucky in that situation because by the time I got to go on um I think a lot of it had dissipated mm. so it, it felt I mean you could definitely feel it a little bit at the beginning but you know I I went on with the with the the knowledge that you know my whole team were like you know try it if it's bad then we stop you know mm-hmm. and I didn't mm-hmm. feel you know pressured to have to really you know work under difficult circumstances yeah. so yeah. you know I felt completely supported and I just thought I went into it with the mindset of you know I'm going to give this a go and if it's fine then I'll continue and if not then we'll have to cancel the show but that's I mean that's the job you know yeah that that day and when it was happening I don't think people quite understood because there were certainly some weird sentiments from f- some people that I personally think are entitled but um later on in the day in the like news uh reports they said that there were multiple pe- people in offices that reported yeah. that they couldn't breathe and they had to go home and just kind of be under covers and or you know so it was absolutely full on 100 I mean other shows were getting canceled and... yeah other shows canceled yes and then yeah. on top of that everybody's a little bit different and what they yeah. can handle like yeah. I'm super uh, sensitive to like stuff if if I if I get coughing <laughs> from one little you know tiny speck of something it's over right so yeah I know that it can be in different times so so I felt that the the grace and the professionalism from both you and Jody were just like at a different level that day I felt that that was just that's the reason you have amazing understudies and it's also the reason she's able to do what she can do with such fearlessness yeah is that she knows she has someone to have her back like that yeah yeah and so did you all discuss it you know did you all talk about it afterward did you just kind of like move on um I think we we had a bit of a cry and a cuddle um we all just kind of you know it was such a bizarre time and I think that we all just needed to feel supported through Mm. that moment and that's exactly what we gave each other um is just that you know we got through it together which is yeah, it was really, it was a kind of bittersweet moment in that, you know, um, we were sad that it, it, you know, that happened under those circumstances, but it was, it was really lovely to know that we really have got each other's backs and that support is just so strong Mm -hmm. that, yeah, it was kind of special in a weird way. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, the, um, what I thought, again, this was a five or so hour flight and by the end I thought like of the flight, just thinking through it a little bit, I thought a star is born. You know, I thought what a, what a moment for you. And thankfully it, sometimes that might happen because something has happened, you know, something terrible has happened. And this was just a case of, no, you're put me in coach. I'm ready to go Yeah, this whole time. So I, I thought it was, it, it was so funny to me just having been around everybody for so many weeks. It was just so funny to see every entertainment at times you know USA Today everybody picked this up yeah um (laughs) I feel like I was a bit shell-shocked I didn't I couldn't really I couldn't really process what was happening for a long time it's quite funny because I remember like Diane our stage manager coming to my room afterwards and being like you know you did an amazing job it was it was a beautiful show and I just couldn't really process what had just happened it took me a few days to be like okay okay like Uh, yeah totally understandable like out of body and I don't know if you could have done it if that didn't happen if your mind because the mind is a beautiful thing and I don't think it could have worked you would have been too much pressure yeah some outside force if you had but too much you might have said no you know I know to be honest that is complete like that's completely down to this amazing bubble that we live in backstage where it feels like a family and it didn't feel it didn't feel scary because I knew that they were all there holding my hand and supporting me through it you know so it just it felt it wasn't until afterwards I was like whoa (laughs) well that that is very uh I'm very cool that you got to do that and 
Um, and I know you all, you also had your own performance. Um, yeah. Do you think that helped you because you had had the stage? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there was a few things that I messed up in the performance before that. Um, I mean, tiny things that people might not have noticed, but I noticed. Mm. Um, so I think that, yeah, it was so helpful because, you know, you've just got to, you can run the line so many times, but unless you're on there doing it, you know, on the set, there's so many moving parts to that and, you know, a million costume changes and files to be in the right place and a lot of the technical stuff. It is just through practice. You know, you have to just do it 20 times to make yourself feel really comfortable um, in that space. You know, you have to kind of own it. And um, yeah, so I definitely feel that doing that helped hugely, massively. How cool. Yeah, I, lo I love that performance. I've told you that multiple times. I'm going to, I, the British, uh, as a group, you all don't love compliments. I've noticed <laughs> <laughs> as a group, and, and especially with this play, I, I try to say a compliment and it's just sort of like, oh, let's go to the next topic. Please. Yeah. But, but I definitely, you know, I'm from Texas. Not only am I American, but I'm from Texas. So you're going to get a lot of compliments, but it's very, very authentic. Um, it's, and I love watching that performance because I had seen the uh, Jody's version of it so many times in just different ways that I'm um, helping with the play, but yours was so unique. It had its own, it had its own fingerprint to it. And at the same time, it was very familiar and worked, you know, made it worked and was respectful of the original kind of thing that was happening. But I thought that's so cool. Do you, I don't know enough about um, theater to know, is it customary for the understudy to get their own performance or is that something that, this production has done no it's definitely not and that's what you know is again there's there's a million things that are super special about this about this show but um I mean for me it, yeah it's gone beyond what I whatever my expectations were mm -hmm. um James Beam and our producer has just done the most amazing job at making everyone feel really um valued in this company and and that goes to, for every single Everybody. person on this job. Yeah. and yeah so it's not normal and I love that I love that you know he's he's done that and he's done it in such a beautiful way that um you know when we did it in London um all of the tickets that were sold all of the money that was raised went to the school's consent project mm. so it felt like just a really brilliant thing to do. And again, you know, there was lots of people who came to that understudy performance who might not have been able to afford a ticket to see the other performances because these were, you know, a much discounted rate, which again, just was just so amazing because that's one thing that I'm really um, passionate about is, you know, that people can get to the theatre who, mm -hmm maybe can't afford to buy those really expensive seats and um yeah so I mean it's been amazing when I when, when they um I think they posted on Twitter about that they were doing the understudy run here and it was a free performance and I was walking through Times Square on the day that the, the tweet had gone out yeah. and there was a couple next to me talking about it and they were like oh my God, they put on this performance for the understudy. And, wow. and I kind of just like grabbed his shoulder. And I just, I was like, that's me. And they were both <laughs> actors and they couldn't believe it. They were so happy for me. And they were like, this doesn't happen. And, you know, it's amazing. They'd both been understudies on different jobs before. And they just said, you know, this, this doesn't happen. This is such an amazing thing that they've done for you. And I was like, I know, I feel so lucky. Yeah. Um, I wasn't familiar with, with if it was normal or not, but something about it felt like this can't be normal because I just know how much of production is and like just all the, the pieces. And um, again, like when I've had the pleasure of interviewing Jody twice now, and she too will not let me just compliment her. It's always about the team. And, but having interviewed the team and met the team for the most part, it's just do you feel like you're spoiled for every other perform production? Yes. 
Yes, I do. I don't know how I'm going to go to another job. I really don't because the, the, yeah, the bar has been set so incredibly high that I think we're all just like pinching ourselves. Yes. Um, what, what does happen next? Do you have anything um, planned or anything that you can reveal to us? I'm not sure. I really, I would love to do some more TV work. I've, I mean, I love theater and this has been, you know, I love it so much like through and through, but I've done bits and bobs on TV, but I think that I'd really like to do more. Um, Also, I really need to spend some time with my family because (laughs) I've kind of neglected them for the last three months. Um, So yeah, I've booked a couple of little holidays with the kids and um my husband and so I'm really looking forward to just yeah being a mum for a bit um and then thinking about the next steps really and without um going too private with you what is that sacrifice like you know of course everything is wonderful but like there is a sacrifice and not only doing a play that's 10 weeks but doing a play of this with this topic of sexual assault and consent Mm mm-hmm and hearing it every day and being just it's in you now because you have to memorize these lines even if you're not saying them yeah what is that like do you think for the people around you or the kind of how do you not exactly asking this the best way but like how does that affect your life do you have to say hey I'm gonna be I'm gonna be kind of gone for three months it's gonna have to be in this capsule in order to do this yeah I think to be honest, I feel like, you know, that especially my kids, like they're the people that instantly break you out of that, you know, like it's like <laughs> there's no kind of they don't know what I'm doing. They don't yeah. know what I'm of the of the show. So it's it's really nice because I love just that's like a complete escapism right there. Um but I think like among my friends, um, it's definitely, you know, brought up a lot of a lot of conversations about about, th- you know, things that might have happened to us in the past and and things that aren't quite right. And yeah, it's really different with like every every kind of group of people, really. But it t- to be honest, I've got two boys. And what it does make me really, really strongly feel is that. I will definitely be having those conversations with those boys when they're old enough to to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I would love the school's consent project project to be in my kids' school. And, you know, I want them to I want them to know about this and I want them to understand that, you know, what what consent is and how important it is and, and to go into the world, you know, having that, yeah, having that knowledge. Yeah, I, I don't know if I've said this to you, but I, I probably haven't said it to the, my audience. Um, because I'm helping bring students to the play, um, mm-hmm. uh, I was able to see this video that was recorded. I, I think you I might think have seen I saw the video. Yeah, of the kids afterwards talking about it. And what yeah. struck me the most in that video is, a, is, you know, five, 10 minute video, high school students. And what struck me the most was this was a boy. And yeah. a young boy said, and this he said very specifically, he was, it, they were acting students. So they were looking at it from that craft. But he also said that um, Jody made him afraid with her. And I just thought that, that, yeah. like, that's such a human feeling. Yeah. That it, cha- if we could have every young boy just, feel that just for a moment that totally. was thing. that it, level of empathy yep I think yep what changes things yeah and yeah this is why I mean everyone needs to see this show it's, everyone needs to see it I mean it was made available as a, as like for, in theaters for a while which is really yeah. cool and now there's a new um movie version that is coming out with a different slant I believe but Susie Miller yeah. the writer with Cynthia Arrivo uh speaking from a woman of color's point of view um yeah. or her point of view not just any woman of color but a woman of color um yeah. I just yeah ho- hopefully there are just multiple ways that this gets out more and more and more because it's just such an interesting way to to take this information in definitely 
Definitely. Can we talk a little bit as I'm listening to you speak? I've all, I've had this question since April. I want to understand. Okay, so what? Where are you from? Like you and Jody have different accents, but you have to sort of almost be from the same place on the plane. I think. Like, how did you? How do you all do? Like, where are you from? And then how do you? What do you do, if anything, to change your accent for the play? So we're both northern, but okay. so Liverpool, where Jody is from, is on the northwest, and I'm from the northeast, um, from a place called Teesside which no one really knows. Well, some people know. Um, but our main city is kind of middle, a place called Middlesbrough. Mm. Um, and yeah, I feel like Liverpool and, you know, the Northeast and the Northwest have like some similarities. There's, you know, um, but regards to the play, um, I think it's funny because we've had so many long conversations about this and I think I was um, really guilty of this myself is when I moved down to London and I went to drama school and I was surrounded by um, people, a lot of people who'd come from really wealthy backgrounds and, you know, spoke RP, which is the kind of like Queen's English. Mm -hmm. Possibly, um, as we would say here in America. Yeah, Possibly. yeah. And so I think um, I, I tried to get rid of my accent a little bit because I think, you know, it's it's associated with um, not having very much money, basically. <laughs> like being from the South in the US. Yeah. I'm from Texas, I have a bit of an accent, but my family yeah. is from Mississippi and they have a much stronger accent. And it's, there's a stigma. Yeah, there's a stigma. Um, and it's funny because when I left drama school, I really tried to backtrack on that because I just thought, what am I doing? You know, why am I trying to be someone else? Like, you know, your uniqueness is what is going to get you work. And, you know, yeah. Um, but I think so. I think it's it's a very similar journey, I think, for Tessa in the play that she comes from this background, but yet she goes to law school and is surrounded by people who you know from a, a kind of higher class background than her and I think that she does she does change herself a little bit in that environment because she wants to be seen as a certain type of person and not that you know and not have the stigma I guess mm. so I think I use my own experience in that to try and do that within the play especially when she's in the courtroom I think there's definitely a a courtroom voice that's different to mm. the way that she speaks mm -hmm. to her mom when she goes back home and her brother and you know yeah and if it makes you feel any better I don't know if it would um to to <laughs> me and to most people in the U.S. we don't know the like we can hear a difference but we don't know yeah. what it means like you yeah. know so for you I I would have thought you were from I wouldn't have known where you're from or if it had any stigma to it it just yeah. sounds very posh to me. It just sounds <laughs> just like, oh, I'm British. Yeah. It's just, it's just, like certain words are just a little said a little differently than other friends that I have, right? And yeah. it's, so it's like you can get away with a bunch of stuff here. Don't don't worry about it. <laughs> I know a few people have asked me if I'm Irish a few times. Yeah, you yeah. have it. Oh, that's totally it. You have it has like a there's a pickup in some of the words, like and it's yeah. like when she says the word says, because she says the law says. She says says, and that's yeah. so interesting. And then you say it when you say play, yours is different. It's different, but even different yeah. than hers. It's so interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just a nerd, so I might be more interested in it than most people. But I just think it's um, because I, I can't figure out, especially with Jody, because she's known for her accent. She's known for being able to being mistaken for Russian, but, uh, for instance, yeah. by, by Susie, the, the playwright. <laughs> yeah, which so. is hilarious. So almost being turned down for the role because of course she's Russian. She can't play a British person, um, yeah. but she's so known for it. So I don't, even to this day, after seeing um, uh, 12 performances, I don't know if she's, if and when, I know sometimes when she's putting one on because she's playing a different character, but I don't yeah. know if Tessa is her accent or not. Is I think Tessa is like a, 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 a posh version of her yeah accent. she has a is it's okay to say scouse right is that yeah that's that's like a just a description yeah is that what you have a scouse accent 
No, well, this is the thing. It's it's a bit of a funny one because um, Newcastle is Geordie and oh. Yorkshire is Yorkshire. <laughs> um, and it's it's kind of, we're somewhere in between. So it's kind of like half Geordie, half Yorkshire. Fascinating. Teaside. It's Teesside, yeah. It's Teesside. I like this name, Teesside. That's cool. <laughs> are you the Are you the most well-known person to come out of Teesside? No. Who's someone that we know that came out of Teesside or that British um, audience knows? Oh, a British audience, um, Mark Benton. He's mm. a really amazing actor. He's been in lots of stuff. Um, he's a Teesider. Um, <laughs> who else? Gordon Steele, who's an amazing playwright. Um, his plays have been performed all over the world. He's from Teesside. He's actually a really good friend of mine. Oh, cool. Yeah, Teesside, um, reads his own shirt. Like, it's, it's a cool name. Yeah. Teesside. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it, I'm sorry, I'm blanking a little bit. So I know what I, what I normally do is ask about your history. You said you've had, um, um, you said bits and bobs. Is that what you said? Bits, bits and, bobs. and bobs. Yeah. I had British roommates when I, in my twenties and I learned that one. <laughs> bits, wow. and bobs. Um, bits and bobs. Yeah, um, but you had so uh, sprinkles of television roles, and and so what was your what have you done mostly? Has it been stage? Has it been TV movies? Yeah, it's been mostly theatre. Mm. Um, I really randomly ended up I, when I left school. I didn't really know what to do with my life, um, and so one of my best friends um, was doing a performing arts course and. I just didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. So I, I ended up just following her onto the course. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, it, it was a weird one. I'd always said that I wanted to be an actor, but I'd not really done anything about it. Um, and then we had a director, a writer director, Gordon Steele, come in to direct one of our shows. And he asked me if I wanted to audition for one of his players that was doing a big UK tour. Um, and he made it very clear that I wasn't going to get the job. This was just for the experience of auditioning. Mm. Um, Fair. And then, so I did that. And then in the end, they gave me the job and I just kind of, yeah. and then it just kind of snowballed from there, really. Um, so, yeah, I feel like it just, it, it was something that kind of happened to yeah, me. It, it, it found you. Yeah. It found you. But yeah. now, I mean, I just can't imagine... I can't imagine doing anything else. I just really can't. What do you like most about it? For someone who's not an actor who doesn't do this either for a living or just for for life, what do you love about it? I think, I mean, especially, you know, not every play is going to change the world. You know, it's like we're so lucky with this piece that it's affected, you know, it just has such a strong effect on people and people are so kind of connected to it and I think that's that's the dream you know that is the when you can change someone's point of view about something through them watching a beautiful piece of art then like that's nail on the head you know that is but I mean, not every play is is, is going to do that, and, and and every everything serves a purpose, you know. Whether you're in a comedy or mm -hmm. whatever you're doing, I think, yeah. But this is this is I think what it's really about is is making change, and mm -hmm. you know, and telling a story, and and having people go away and think about it, and reflect on that, and and maybe change something in their lives or someone else's lives, and that's incredible. Mm -hmm. And um, as we close out, because um, I'm not going to take you to the through the ringer about money, <laughs> which is what I normally do on this on this podcast. <laughs> well, um, as we close out, though, um, is there any any day besides the uh, day that you came in and you know became Star is Born? Um, is there any day on Broadway that has stuck out to you or even the West End that stuck out to you or any any conversation or instance that stuck out to you um that you think is interesting um I think off the completely off the top of my head there's two moments I think when 
um, we did the first preview in London and it's it's such a special time anyway because you know you've been in this rehearsal room you've been in a little bubble and I'd watched Geordie do the show in the rehearsal room a million times and was still completely devastated by it every time and just you know just watching her work is mind-blowing um and so you you kind of feel like you know what an audience is gonna how how they're gonna react but you still you don't really know mm. and that first preview I just Geordie walked off stage the audience went wild and people were so moved by it and it was just it was the most extraordinary reaction in a theater and we all just I remember we all just looked at each other with tears in our eyes just so just bursting with pride for her and Susie and Justin and the whole team just what we'd created it was just such a special moment um I think here um I mean, one one um, particular letter that struck me that we received from someone, I mean, and we get so many, we get so many letters from people who've seen the show and how it's affected them and, and how it's changed their lives. And one of them um, was from a policeman who had seen the show and that he he said that he recognized himself in the scene with the policeman. And he mm. said, you know, that that that's me, that's... I deal with that situation all of the time. And he said, and he said he was basically making a list of ways that he could change and ways that he could support victims more in, in, in that scenario. And I just thought that was so special that he hadn't, he hadn't taken offense to the way that the policeman is portrayed in the show. He'd actually seen it, recognized himself and thought, actually what can I do better mm. and I just thought that was that was so amazing especially coming you know from a man watching that I thought that that was yeah that was really something quite amazing yeah. and absolutely incredible um yeah I've definitely had my own journey with this play my mother had her own reaction to this play yeah um there, there I've many, many, many people have come to see it from my audience and they tell me about it afterwards. And there was uh, one person who said that they had just been suppressing something for so long and that this play allowed them to, it, it, first of all, it took them three weeks to tell me because they just, and I just thought that they saw it and went on with their life. Yeah. It took, they said it, it just touched them so much and also made it possible they believe to open a dialogue with a, with an important family member about it that they hadn't spoken to about it wow um because like this specifically like using this as a kind of breaking the ice yeah uh, that was so powerful and, and for my mother who um she she doesn't talk about this much but she she was very open and very happy to almost happy to say um, that she felt very represented uh, during a specific scene that talked about pain. It talked about wow. physical pain because she said it helped her describe something that she hadn't been able to describe. And, um, um, you know, it's just, it's just person after person after person. It's just been, I love standing outside because I usually wait for people who I've taken in to see what yeah. they and I just love seeing the people's reactions they walk. Do you do that? I, I would imagine you do that too. Just listening to people and men especially have very interesting takes on it. Yeah. I mean, just the way that I've seen audience members, you know, supporting other audience members mm -hmm. who they didn't know at the beginning of the show. And then, mm -hmm. you know, by the end of it, they're having a cry and a cuddle together. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. And, yeah yeah well, it's kind of heartbreaking and it, I yeah yeah it's heartbreaking and then it's beautiful at the same time yeah which is very uh complex but it's also it's okay yeah well we on our first talk back on the very first one we talked about um uh the ability to have joy 
during like working on this play, but having the like the different people who work on it, I wondered how you all found joy each day, you know, and and those different answers were so wonderful to hear because you ultimately feel optimism by the time yeah. of this play. You feel like, oh, there's togetherness, yeah, there's understanding, and there's hope. Yeah. And there's representation. Yeah. And how wonderful is that? You know, I know it's incredible. It's it really is. So now I'm not going to try to bum you out, but there are only a few days left. Oh, two weeks. <laughs> two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah, yeah. Don't make gonna... it any shorter, Alan. <laughs> I'm sorry. There are two full weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that are still left. And then we are going to release this today. So it'll be two full weeks. Yeah. Um, and, and, um, yeah, I, I, I wish the best for you. I, I definitely will see you. Uh, if not before, I'll see you uh, on the last day of it. And yeah. Um, and yeah, I just hope the best for everybody who's involved. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. It's been an absolute joy that you're part of this team. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I've, you know, I've had the time of my life working on this and, and helping where I can. Good, cool. good. Thank you so much. Thank you.